You're listening to the They May All Be One podcast with Shane Sands, founder and president of United in Christ Jesus. Hello and welcome to another episode of the They May All Be One podcast. I'm your co-host, Holly Sands. Today we're going to be hitting a pretty controversial subject called Can a Christian Judge? But before we get into it, please help me welcome the country road driving, the green tractor loving. That's what I'm talking about. The toe down with the hoe down. Yeehaw. The razzle dazzle cowboy of the upstate. Give me some bedazzle. And my husband, Shane Sands. Yeehaw. Rustle up some doggies. Mm, love me some country. It makes me want to get out on the range and drive some cattle. Oh, yeah. Ooh. Ah, what a show, what a show. All right, we are really glad to be here with you today. I'm really excited to be here as well. Uh, just rejoicing in the Lord and His unfailing love. Hallelujah, our Lord, our King, our Master, our God, our Savior, Jesus. He is risen, and He rules and reigns. And at a time of the Father's choosing, He is returning. Amen. What a program we got for you today. It is an extremely controversial and very sensitive uh, subject we're dealing with. And so to kind of maybe have a little lighter mode today before we get into this, uh, we thought we would tell you about, or I'm going to have Holly tell you about a special, unique character that we have running around Greenville. Well... Maybe even Charleston now, but... Uh, Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte. Yeah, Charlotte. Take it away. <laughs> Sorry, dude. <laughs> well, this happened in our downtown area. Uh, this guy was sneaking up on unsuspecting people and splatting their faces with a plate of whipped cream. Wap. Wap. <laughs> but unfortunately, our local news worded it as he attempted to injure a woman by throwing a plate of whipped cream in her face. And he's being charged with assault and battery i i actually think the police are like not really caring about <laughs> following up on the, i mean it's like <laughs> okay look okay they went to his youtube channel as we did if anybody were to see this fellow <laughs> <laughs> they would know that he's a complete derp <laughs> just a goofball i mean he did not intend to hurt anybody he was just pulling a prank Unfortunate for him, he pranked the wrong person who pressed charges. But. <laughs> yeah, like, no fun for you. The beatings will continue until morale improves. This guy, and then, what was it you were telling me today? Yeah, today I went to his YouTube channel just to see if there was anything going on because people are saying, hey, man, they got a warrant out for you. <laughs> so he apparently made an apology video. But unfortunately for him, <laughs> he left his locator service on, and you could view exactly where he was broadcasting Epic from. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, seriously, can you imagine the police sitting in there? One, they're looking at the picture of this guy as he's smiling up at him with the plate of whipped cream. We just can't stop <laughs> laughing at this guy. <laughs> Next, you see him. He's up. going in. Hey, we're not trying to cause harm. We're just doing a little video, YouTube. Check out my channel, all that. But now, I mean, I'm sure they're going, look, if you just run across the guy, all right, do what you got to do, but we have to chase a heart. This guy actually has his locator on. I could see the cops going, dude, you're making this too easy for us. I mean, we can make one little phone call, and the next thing you know, you. <laughs> I mean, and that's uh, what we mean by derby. <laughs> oh, gosh. It, it's been a source of entertainment for us this week, especially True. if you see the guy smile. He's got a kind of infectious smile. Yeah. He is goofy, but man. Oh, <laughs> oh golly. Oh, okay, well. That's going to kind of segue us now into uh, this week's program. And like we said, it is very controversial. It is one that is going to, uh, we pray, cause you to be very timid, very nervous, uh, because we're, we're getting into an area that from last week, and I'll cover that here in just a second, 
But um, maybe, Holly, do you have any advice for anyone before we get into this program? Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? <laughs> <laughs> okay, now this is your chance. Because from here on out, um, yeah. So as let the games al- begin, let the games begin. <laughs> so as always, we're not going to be trying to bring you our opinions, our thoughts, our pro. You know, if there's an area that is open for opinion, we'll we'll state it. Yeah, but before we get into that, why don't you just go ahead and give us a short recap of what we covered last week and how it led up to today's broadcast? Absolutely. You know, so last week we were talking about false conversion, and with false conversion. Uh, that's where I was from early age. That was me. We knew from last week when you start talking about someone's salvation experience uh, and whether or not you can actually ascertain from the Word of God whether someone is really a believer or not, that it was going to bring about a lot of um, probably pushback And so we knew, and we talked about it last week, that it's good for us now to jump into this and examine from the scriptures what a true, you know, what judgment looks like. Because last week, Holly played a couple of clips of two guys, and one, he was talking about the difference between religion and spirituality, and the other guy made an absolute claim to be born again, but he didn't know what it meant, how he knew it, or anything of the above. And so just by going through the scriptures, we were able to say, here you go, this is what we're looking at, this is how we're evaluating it. So this week we're going to jump into this a little bit further, and we're actually going to dive way down into this, uh, and we're going to talk about whether or not a believer uh, can judge. Uh, I'm going to set up something that's going to come to us in here in just a little bit. Uh, there's a guy many of you who follow basketball know is Charles Barkley. Charles Barkley, big-time basketball guy. Now he's on TNT's uh, NBA program. Back in 2008, he had a interview on CNN, and what he had to say was pretty remarkable. And we're going to look at that, and we're going to dissect what he said And we're going to place it up against the scriptures, and we're just going to see how how that pans out. Um, So the key is here is, are we able to judge? This is what this program is about. And so uh, my first thing that we're going to think about is as we go through our day, our day-to-day life, do we judge? Do we judge? Do we... um, do we actually go through and make decisions throughout the day based on information we have? So let's just make this clear. What are we talking about when we use the word judge? I mean, that could hold a lot of different meanings to different people. Exactly. And, and, that, and that is a key point is learning to, to define your terms because Scripture can use judgment in different ways. Uh, the Greek language had a lot more variety. So like there's three different words for love. Uh, so the, the meaning is defined by the context. Generally what we are meaning, what is being defined, is a, an evaluation, a determination, a, an inspection of what's before us. It's not a judgment as though we are passing judgment on someone's eternal state. Because that's what most people think of. When you say you're judging them, they're trying to determine, they're trying to make it seem as though you are judging their eternal state and not their situation. When in fact you are evaluating their situation, they just don't want to be accountable to that. Or, or like we're going to see later, they just want you to get out of their business. Correct. They, they love their sin, and they would rather you just, Leave them alone so they don't have to think about their sin and who they've sinned against. Uh, So this week, as we said, we're going to look at uh, can a believer judge? Uh, Are we able to examine? But more importantly is this word expected. Are we expected to judge? And And that becomes the key. 
Are we expected to go through our lives day in, day out, and judge, evaluate, discern? And I think that what you're going to find out is going to be remarkable, and it's going to be a challenge to you. And I think what the best way for me to, to segue into this is actually taken out of God's Word, and it's in John chapter 5, verse 30. And I, I do want to let you know, we're going to probably reference a bunch of Scripture. We're not going to go through a lot of Scripture today. We're going to uh, talk on things. I'll mention Scripture. We'll talk about the verses. We're not going to go through them all. But if you go to the description page and you look on, on the description page of the podcast, you are going to see all the scripture references. I'm going to list out a whole bunch for you, and I want you guys to be noble Bereans. Go open up the scriptures, look at the context, look around the surrounding context, and see and evaluate if what I'm saying is accurate or what Holly is saying is accurate uh, because there's only one God, and there's only one true word of God, and we're all we all stumble in many ways. But we've taken time to really make sure that we're bringing you correct content and context so that you can actually discern accordingly. So in John chapter 5, verse 30, you hear this. I can do nothing on my own initiative. As I hear, I judge, and my judgment is just because I do not seek my own will, but the will of him who sent me. The simple answer is yes, we do judge. The simple answer is Yes, we are called to examine, but we should use the same framework. <clears throat> We're not looking after our own will, but to do the will of the Lord Jesus who sent us. And as we hear, we evaluate. And what do we use to evaluate? The Word of God. Just as the Lord Jesus listened to the Father and obeyed the Father and obeyed the Word of God, the Scriptures, and then through the Scriptures he was able to evalu- evaluate, discern, And then he was doing that not for his own benefit, for his own glory, but for his father's. So if somebody were to ask you, what's what's your goal in judging someone? Is uh, is to actually have someone in right fellowship with the Lord. In any type of evaluation, even if, um, even like last week when we talked about Simon the sorcerer, Peter was really clear about repent and perhaps the Lord may forgive. So Peter, even in that, where he called called Simon out for not being a believer, was saying, you need to repent, and if so, perhaps. So the goal is always to have right fellowship, is to always build someone up. Right, not tear them down. Not tear them down. Even Even in a heavy rebuke, the goal of that needs to be first and foremost, what's the goal? to have someone in right relationship, to, to know forgiveness, to know peace with God through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. So why don't we begin with one of the most misused <laughs> scriptures? Oh, yeah. Between both the believers and non-believers. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Here we go. Uh, a little another quick uh, side warning. If you hear me have to uh, inadvertently cough or I'm taking a drink or something. The pollen around here right now is really, really bad. (laughs) It's really bad. So All the cars are fluorescent green. We have a black car. We washed it yesterday before the end of the day. Um, Yeah, it was the Hulk. (laughs) All right. Well, tell me if you guys have ever heard this, ladies and gentlemen. Do not judge so that you will not be judged. Oh, man. There you go. I think that's probably the one scripture everyone knows. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it's been used, especially when I've been out, out and preaching the gospel. I can, Some form of that verse has been used so many times. Basically, you're not to judge. You know, you're... You don't judge me. You don't judge. And here we're hearing the Lord Jesus say, do not judge so that you will not, so you won't be judged. Well, I guess that's it. That's definitive proof, except the context of that verse, uh, not that verse, but the context of the section of Scripture where that verse is gives 
a whole different meaning. And that goes, do not judge so that you will not be judged. For in the way you judge, you will be judged. And by your standard of measure, it will be measured to you. Why do you look at the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that's in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, but, and behold, the log is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Do not give what is holy to dogs, and do not throw your pearl before swine, or they will trample them under their feet and turn and tear you to pieces." Yeah, so in the context of this six verses, not only is the Lord calling us to evaluate, he's saying first and foremost, you need to make sure you've evaluated yourself first and properly. If you see something in someone else, and it's, it's upsetting you enough to where you think you need to go and address it, there's a good chance that you have something far worse than you. So the Lord isn't actually saying that we're not to judge. He's saying, first and foremost, evaluate yourself, remove any obstacle, that obstacle out of your own life, and then you will have the ability, let me say, wisdom, love, understanding, compassion, on how to remove the speck out of your brother's eye. Think of Proverbs, you know, as apples of gold and settings of silver, is a wise reprover to a listening ear. You will then be able to know how to actually reach into a person's life. I think really, though, uh, Holly, the, the most important is that last verse, verse 6. And it says, Do not give what is holy to dogs and do not throw your pearls before swine. Yeah, how does that fit into the judging part? So on the first part, we're looking to ident- evaluate ourselves so we'll know how to take the speck out of our brother's eye, how to help them. This one is having the wisdom and discernment to know when to not give it to someone. Uh, good point. So sometimes the best thing that you can do, I'm thinking of Paul when Paul would said that he had decided to turn such and such over to Satan so that they would learn not to blaspheme. Paul had addressed it, had talked about it, but at some point, you just have to say no, and you leave them in God's hands, and maybe God will have mercy on them and bring someone else into the life. Maybe he won't. But at some point, the best thing that you can do is just walk away. So, all right, so if we are to judge, what is it that we're to judge? Well, I think the first part is, as we go to evaluate, now this is, a lot of these things are happening so rapidly in our life, but there's some things that you should never be doing, and when we start talking about judging, the the first thing you should do is hopefully you've gotten a little nervous, hopefully you're a little bit on edge with this, and that you're going to walk extremely carefully. Because the first thing that you never, ever, 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 ever do is determine the state of a person's eternal soul. That is not up for you to do. We're told in James chapter 4, there is only one lawgiver and judge, the one who is able to save and to destroy. But who are you to judge your neighbor? Uh, Make sure that you, if you're looking at something, you're not coming at this from a standpoint of uh, you're not a believer, you'll never be a believer, you're going straight to hell. Don't ever do that. Only God has the, has the right to judge someone's eternal state. Um, I suppose that the next one that I would be looking at wanting to address is uh, what about those outside the church or inside the church. And here's where uh, the Charles Barkley is going to come into play. So, Holly, you have a a clip, and I want you to play that for us, and then we're going to talk about that right after. Uh, All right, one quick point before I let you go. You use the phrase fake Christians for conservatives. Explain what you're talking about. Well, I think they, they... 
They want to be judge and jury. Like, I'm for gay marriage. It's none of my business if gay people want to get married. I'm pro-choice. And I think these Christians, first of all, they're supposed to be, they're not supposed to judge other people, but they're the most hypocritical judge of people we have in this country. And it bugs the hell out of me. They act like they're Christians and they're not forgiven at all. So you're going to get a lot of feedback on this one, uh, Charles. They can't do anything to me. I don't work for them. Do you feel comfortable saying all that? I feel very comfortable saying pro I'm pro-choice and I'm for gay marriage. Very you, comfortable. But you can't lump all these conservatives as being fake. A lot of them, obviously, most of them uh, are very, very sincere in their religious beliefs. Well, they should read the part of the Bible. They're not supposed to judge other people. They forget that one when it doesn't fit what they want to say. All right, we got to leave it there, Charles. Uh, thanks very much for joining us. Okay. Well. Isn't he judging us? Uh, yeah. That's that's exactly the, you know, uh, there's another scripture that says, you know, you who judge, uh, do you not judge yourself? <laughs> so don't you do the same thing? Charles Barkley was basically judging Christians and calling us fake Christians, conservatives. Um uh, He's lumping a bunch of stuff together, and it says that because he's pro-choice and pro-gay marriage. And he's calling believers fake Christians because they're so hypocritical because they judge. They're not supposed to judge, and only God is, can judge, and that we forget that. So remember how we talked about Matthew chapter 7, verse 1? Bingo. I mean, and I honestly, I don't even know what he's talking about. Like, does somebody come up to him and say something to him? Or is it just because he was talking about conservatives? If it, if it was just them standing up for what they believe in well, and it opposed what he had believed in, so he thought that they were judging. Is that what he was doing? Yeah, so what he was talking about is he was saying that, you know, it's none of his business about any of these other things going on. It doesn't involve him. Well, in fact, it does involve him. And so what was happening is uh, evidently believers uh, were calling him out or calling others out saying, no, uh, when you take the life of an unborn child, that's murder. Uh, and you know, we're looking at uh, gay marriage as to what God says in his word. And so what he's saying is, is hold on, you can't judge. So, And yet I thought it was funny that they're like, he, he said that they weren't forgiving well, what are they supposed to for I mean, he he's just he was blatant about, no, I I support this and I'm not going to change my mind. So what are we forgiving? I don't even understand. But that's the whole point. That that's was crazy. That's the Freudian slip. Right. He's already acknowledging that it was wrong. Right. I mean, that that's the point and that's the hypocrisy that we deal with. And that's why if it really wasn't an issue, he would have just simply been able to say you know what, I, I disagree. I don't think that they're looking at this correctly. Instead, he was angry because people were saying, this is what God says, and yeah. it's wrong. So he then was judging us based on, and when I say us, I'm talking about the Christian body, and calling so many people fake. Right. So the key there is, in one sense, though, Charles Barkley is absolutely correct. In one sense, he is, because we're not called to judge those outside the body. It doesn't mean that we're called not to share truth. It doesn't mean that we're not called to actually, uh, if the Lord opens the door for us to speak about sin, righteousness, and judgment, that's not it. But we're not to, if someone has an abortion, while that is a, that is a sin, and while that is painful, and while we can uh, hopefully empathize or any number of things, at the same time, we still address it, but we don't condemn someone over it. That, that's the key. But So on the outside, we don't judge those people. But the difference is, is that God says that those are inside the church, we are to judge. And the best section of this that I think that we can take is going to come out of 1 Corinthians chapter 5, and it's verses 1 through 13. And just briefly, first one, it says, first verse, it is actually reported that there is immorality among you and immorality of such a kind 
as does not exist even among the Gentiles, that someone has his father's wife. Down at the bottom, uh, verses 11 through 13, but actually I wrote to you not to associate with any so-called brother if he is an immoral person or covetous or idolater or viler or drunkard or a swindler, not to even eat with such a one. For what have I to do with judging outsiders? Do you not judge those who are within the church? But those who are outside, God judges. Remove the wicked man among yourselves. Just a little insight there. Remember that Paul just said any so-called brother. And that's what we're about to touch on here in a minute. But he calls so-called because of the fruit. We have the clearest part of Scripture here that we're mentioning people that are inside the church committing a heinous sin and those who are outside the church. And Paul goes, you don't worry about those. You bring them the gospel. You you love on them. You share with them. You, you help. But you don't judge those. But those who are inside the church who called themselves a brother or a sister and their, and their behavior, their life, the fruit they're producing is contrary to the gospel or walking in, in light of the gospel, you are absolutely up to and even including having them put out of the church. So then what do we do with Romans 14 when it says, um, who are you to judge the servant of another? To his own master, he stands or falls, and he will stand for the Lord is able to make him stand. What How, do we do with that? Hallelujah. The, and that actually goes into the next point that I'd really like to talk about. What about a person who's new in the faith or who has a weakness? You know, what about their freedoms? Well, we're, this section of Scripture right there talks about someone's weakness or freedoms in Christ. And so... Instead of passing judgment on their opinions, instead of coming through and condemning them because, oh, you know, Shane can only eat vegetables. He hasn't learned that he can actually have meat. Poor Shane. Yeah, so now you're casting, you're judging, and you're, you're actually being hypocritical. Christ died for Shane. So what do we do with that is we keep it in the right context and we understand that we actually are going to be building one another up. We're actually going to be wanting to have someone to sow the word of God in their life in such a way so that they start by God's grace, by the power of the Holy Spirit to understand and see what truly the freedoms they have, what true knowledge of Christ and of God the Father can bring about in your life. But it also means that you have to walk in such a way so that you don't put a stumbling block before your brother. Let's just clarify that real quick about freedoms, though. We're not talking about blatant sin, right? Correct. So in 1 Corinthians, once again, 1 Corinthians 5 the Corinthian church, man, they were like, "Woo! look at this. We have such freedom that we can even do this, and we're a part of the body. And Paul's going, You're, you, you should have been mourning over this. This was horrible. So if it's blatant sin, that's not freedom. Yeah. That, that's, that's con, that is going against contrary to what God has told us. But if someone, let's say, for example, doesn't want to have Sunday as a Sabbath, but you really believe that it is, or there's a, you know, to eat meat again, or maybe to have a, a glass of wine, whatever the case, and you have a different view or whatever the case may be, if it's not going against God's word, and this person is, is their faith is settled on this position, and you actually being a, a stronger believer know that that's not necessary, then you shouldn't put a stumbling block to trip them up and cause them to, to stumble. You should actually be the one who's helping to build them up. So what about when the Lord says you'll know them by their fruits? What's he talking about there? Well, and, and that is that is really, that gets into the heart of judging. That gets into the heart of what we're trying to right. do. And, that, and that, that actually tells us what we are to judge, right? Correct. So what's coming out of a person Jesus, when they were the Pharisees were complaining about what he was eating and you know wasn't washing, um, that he he's like, hey, hold on, 
It's not what goes into a person that defiles the person, but what comes out. And then he went on to list a bunch of things, and think of Galatians 5, that defile the person. So Jesus is is talking about what's coming out of a person is actually indicative of what's going on in their heart. They may actually be a believer. Remember, Second Peter tells us that someone who doesn't have these qualities within their lives ha- are either blind or they have forgotten their former purification. So there, you could be in a season where something has happened and you've, you've fallen, you've gone off the path, whatever the case. So we're evaluating that fruit. We're not judging them as to their salvation or whether they're not. Um, the only time that you can really do that is if someone's saying, well, yeah, I'm a born-again believer, but they have no nothing to say what they're saved from. The fruit there is I can still live my life the way I do. I still do the things I, I'm a believer, I'm born again, and they don't have any idea of what they're saved from. Here we're talking about someone is saying they're a believer and what's coming out of their mouth, what their behavior is happening is just like Paul said, any so-called believer. Are they immoral? Are they covetous? Are they greedy? Are they a swindler? Are they liars? These are all indications of worldly behavior and not of a regenerate, transformed life. Right. So I think think you're already touching on um, how how we can judge. What, what, what do we use to judge people by? Yeah. And that would be? The Word of God. Amen. So, and as and as we go Hebrews through four eleven and twelve, yeah, the word of God is living and active and sharper than any two edged sword, and piercing to the division of soul and spirit of both joints and marrow, and able to judge the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And I like what the King James says: "Is a discerner." So we could use the word of God to discern others' behavior or their fruit. Absolutely, I think, and when we are using the Word of God, and when we are getting into coming to somebody, that we need to be really careful, and we need to evaluate ourselves, just like the Lord Jesus said. So as we're bringing the Word of God, we evaluate ourselves, and we make sure. I just want to read real quick Galatians chapter 6, uh, verses 1 and 2. Brethren, if anyone is caught in any trespass, you who are spiritual, restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness, each one looking to yourself so that you too will not be tempted. Bear one another's burdens and thereby fulfill the law of Christ. So as we are holding one another accountable, as we are caring for one another, as we are sowing the word of God into a person's life, and we find someone who has fallen, they're in a trespass. We so quickly want to be the ones to cast the stone, but we don't want to be the one to even say, I'll lose my freedoms to bear your weight. That verse 2 actually gives us the indication of coming alongside someone in their weakness and then putting your arm under their arm and actually taking the weight on yourself. So when you're talking about judging, evaluating, discerning, what we are talking about is loving someone to the point that as Christ loved us and gave his life for us, that we would do the same. Now, don't don't get me wrong here. We've been talking a whole lot about evaluating bad fruit and coming along, just like I said, and bearing up but we're also talking about celebrating good things as well. If someone has done something that just exalts Christ, we can celebrate, discern that, and then rejoice with them and declare the praises of Christ right along with that. Right. So, honey, in closing, you'd mentioned some words of wisdom someone once gave you regarding this. Why don't you share those with us? Yeah. um, This is before I was a believer, and his name was Mr. Chapman. Mr. Chapman, Vietnam vet, um, he said to me, Shane, in life you have to make decisions. And these decisions are going to help some people and they are going to hurt some people. And you have to do the best to get all the right information to to make as, as good a decision as you can. 
And when you make that decision, you have to live with the consequences of that decision. So some people are going to be happy. Some people won't be happy. But you have to stand firm on that decision. And so when I go into this and I think about this, I go, as you go throughout your day, have the word of God richly dwelling in you to exalt Christ, to bring glory to the Father, so that as you go about evaluating and discerning, you can lead people to Christ and have them resting at his feet. So I think we've had a good discussion today about what righteous judgment looks like. To reiterate, number one, we are not to pass judgment on an unbeliever being outside of Christ. God is the one who judges them. Number two, when we speak of judging other believers, a better way to express the word judging is to evaluate. We are definitely told to evaluate the fruit of others. The fruit of a person's life will always reveal their heart status. And number three, we are also to be extremely cautious in doing so because we have to look to ourselves first before we point out the sins of others. Thanks again for joining us on this broadcast. If you have any questions, suggestions, or would like someone to pray with you, please visit us at thatthemayallbeone.org and click on the contact page. We would love to hear from you. Remember to rate us on your podcast app, subscribe, and share with a friend. That They May All Be One podcast is a ministry of United in Christ Jesus.